Um, so this is actually a, the uh, website for uh, um, Microsoft HD Insight, which is our Hadoop on Windows Azure offering. And you can go to www.hadooponazure.com, or you can simply search for HD Insight. There's an invitation link on there, and you're welcome to sign up for a free three-node uh, three cluster to be able to start running some of it um, if you're interested. Um, and also, um, uh, so... so so the, the focus of today's um, topic is really about uh, um, HPC servers. So we're not go going to go into too much of the uh, uh, big data. But I, if we have, do have time at the end of the um, uh, presentation, I might uh, be able to show you uh, what it looks like and uh, um, uh, give you a very brief introduction. So let's go back to HPC server. And we went through the three different types of uh, um, application models, which is embarrassingly parallel. Um, tightly coupled and also uh, uh, data intensive. So let's talk about how these things are being managed by the Windows HPC Server Pack. Um, so first of all, the HPC Pack consists of job scheduling, which allows you to be able to prioritize um, workloads that are submitted by uh, various users. And we also have cluster management, be able to show you uh, which machines are up and running and uh, um, their CPU utilization, essentially a mon monitoring tool. And this is connected to Windows clients. You can actually have Windows 7 and Windows 8 machines connect to Windows HPC server or a Windows server machine installed with HPC pack. Um, and then you can also connect Windows HPC servers to it to be able to do more interesting workloads um, because HPC server generally um, supports uh, these InfiniBand and all those you know, specialized hardware better. And of course, you can... Just right-click and add a bunch of Windows Azure nodes, which are running in the cloud, um, if you run out of resources on-premise. So this is what this product is all about, being able to um, uh, manage large amounts of cluster, um, large amount, amounts of uh, uh, node resources on-premise as well as um, on Windows Azure. Um, so here are some of the use scenarios. One is that... Uh, uh, folks might want to just simply run a cluster on-premise, meaning that you have one um, head node which controls a bunch of server nodes or you know, client nodes, and you're happily running, and you don't need any resources in the cloud. So that's the traditional way of running things. The second way of running it is saying, okay, I do have a cluster on-premise, and you can run and control a bunch of nodes on-premise as well as adding nodes to the cluster. And the third configuration is simply saying, okay, I don't have much resources on-premise and I only want to use the nodes that um, in the cloud. So you can only simply add nodes from the cloud. Um, so here are what we offer in terms of features on these uh, on-premise versus the cloud. Um, so, obviously, you need the parallel runtime. So, for example, the MPI library, um, uh, SOA or SOA, a service-oriented uh, architectural um, uh, runtime, and you may need resource management. Um, and on Windows Azure, you probably need pretty much the same thing, except that you need um, special software that connects and talks to Windows Azure fabric. So, be able to um, manage and uh, provision um, hardware resources in the cloud. So here are some, um, here's the uh, uh, running, uh, a diagram of uh, uh, running cloud applications in Windows Azure. So first of all, um, we support applications hosted entirely on Windows Azure um, now. So meaning that you would uh, have no on-premise nodes at all. Um, so that is the Azure scheduler that uh, I will discuss um, and show you an example of. Um, and application is accessed from rich client on-premise portal and web applications. So um, what's new um, about the cloud is not simply being able to utilize a bunch of resources in the cloud, but also be able to access those resources much easier. So one of the interesting things that uh, um, people tend to do is to um, have their rich client, meaning that you know, their client may have um, 3D rendering, um, connects onto um, Azure resources or the compute resources. Um, that's one way of accessing either local resources or um, remote resources. And then using a portal. So essentially you have a website 
which allows you to start running these long, um, you know, very compute intensive workloads um, using a portal, and then finally using a web application that is uh, has been customized for that. Um, and also, there are multiple business models for um, for our customers um, uh, for uh, selling their HPC application. One is selling it as a packaged um, and be able to connect to Azure, which the customer pays for and the customer manages. And the other way um, is to simply provide HPC as a service. Um, simply allows you to connect to a portal. And you don't actually buy the software or install the software. You run everything through um, a web portal um, or as a service in the cloud. So those are the two uh, main business models that people can use, utilize the cloud resources. Um, and the uh, scheduler runtime support uh, includes parametric suite, which I, as I said, very much the embarrassing parallel application. You send it a thousand tasks and it farms it out to the resources that you have, either in the cloud or on premise. SOA, which allows you to keep a lot of things in memory and be able to um, call, uh, call these services r relatively quickly. So for example, banking and insurance might want this model. Um, so if I want to do a pricing of a security instantly, um, I may simply click on a, um, click on a uh, Excel, Excel spreadsheet and be able to get my calculation back um, in real time, even if the entire job has not finished. And then finally, MPI, as we discussed, mostly for uh, matrix solvers and uh, these, these uh, scientific applications. Um, and of course, on the uh, on Azure on the uh, on the uh, Azure scheduler, we don't necessarily need a head node. Um, so it's simply doing um, scheduler service and not necessarily um, the admin service because that's taken care of by Windows Azure for you. Um, so in order to build a scheduler enabled deployment, you need Azure sub subscription, obviously, and your application, which you have to package, and it's a pretty straightforward process. Essentially, you're um, zipping it up and copy it into Windows Azure. And uh, you have to construct a, um, a CS package. Um, that's just, just a tool that you can use from Visual Studio. Um, and then you can customize uh, uh, simply saying how many cores you need and deploy that through Visual Studio or um, through um, um, uh, 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 on-premise package that uh, uh, the developer gives you um, if you don't have Visual Studio. So this is how Windows Azure Scheduler works. Um, um, it has a, an application front end, uh, and we'll show you an example very soon. Um, the, uh, it consists of the HPC job scheduling, which is resource management, and then you have a bunch of compute nodes sitting in the background, and you can, that can do a bunch of work, right? So, and then finally, um, here are the uh, um, features of uh, uh, Big Compute, um, and then soon we will go to uh, uh, demos. Um, one is on on premise. You have the hybrid HPC system, which essentially allows you to run um, workloads that are sitting on premise as well as work that are uh, running the cloud. And job scheduling, runtime services. Those are essentially what you need to be able to run um, run your job. Um, and those are libraries and also uh, uh, services that uh, we provide you on your on premise um, and the nodes that are actually doing the computation. Um, and soon we would have, um, as, we, as I said earlier, we'll have premium hardware, uh, which will have RDMA networking, and we'll have remote visualization and workflow. So a lot of that work, uh, that, a lot of that work is currently in progress um, in the, uh, you know, the fu uh, future works. So let me actually show you how very quickly um, you can actually create a cluster. So this is a, um, something called the HPC um, Azure, uh, Azure Job Scheduler. So what you can do is you can go download that package, load that up in Visual Studio. It's essentially a template that allows you to create, create a front end, which would be a web portal, and then a head node, and then the, a bunch of worker nodes that you can add to it. And you can add your uh, uh, Azure sam sample services. And then as soon as you configure how many nodes you want, you can deploy that. Um, and uh, in terms of the work, you can simply attach a new project and add um, the, the computation or the uh, executables that you want into the Visual Studio project and uh, use the configuration panel to deploy um, your work. So that's one way of doing that. And I also have power, uh, ways of uh, using PowerShell and other deployment methods. Um, yeah, that's right. As it says, I have PowerShell available as too, uh, too. And if you look on my blog, you'll be able to see a lot of that. Um, so 
uh, the other interesting uh, interesting configuration is uh, using a rich client. So this is actually an OpenGL client uh, that allows you to uh, simply right click and say, I want shared memory cluster or, or the cloud. So this is a company called uh, uh, Simscape, which I work very closely to uh, help port uh, a piece of code called OpenFoam. This is uh, um, essentially doing a, a fluid uh, um, computation of fluid dynamics. So this is a, basically a race car. As you can see, there's a vortex at the uh, end. So what we did is essentially um, running this rich client on locally and be able to select Azure, uh, Windows Azure um, in the cloud and providing with a subscription um, information and uh, just simply click on compute and it will upload the code to uh, Windows Azure and do the computation and download that transparently. So a lot of that, if, uh, you know, detailed information can be found on my blog or you can definitely contact me uh, through my email if you want to know more about it. <music>